You know, you tell this story um, about uh, in high school, the first sort of sexual experience that you have. And um, we're going deep. We're, we're going to get into it a little bit because I think it's such a an informative piece for, for young people to read, especially young people who are marginalized within their community, because it's not just a story of a first sexual experience. It's how when you are marginalized, you can be exploited. And those who are exploiting come from being marginalized as well. And they might not even recognize that they're doing it. There are so many layers to that story and the people involved in it, you as well as the, the, the two men who one of which you have a relationship with and the other one is upset with you. What were you thinking about when you, when you, what did you learn from that story when you were writing about it as a, as an adult? I was very judgmental of myself at that time. I was 17 years old. I got myself involved in this relationship with a guy who was 40. Um, I thought that I was sort of smart enough to handle the intricacies of an adult relationship, and I was not. Um, you write about it so smartly in the sense that this was also your only option in a way. Option. Well, I, it, it certainly felt that way. I mean, you know, growing up in in Omaha and going to an all-boys Catholic school, it's not like there there was no, like, uh, you know, gay and lesbian ally meeting at my high school. Like, that wasn't a thing. And I I didn't meet a lot of other young gay people. There were, they were there, but um, we just were not out to each other. And I think that's something that I realized too. My, my best friend growing up was this kid, Joe Costello, and we were friends from, like best friends, like inseparable from kindergarten to eighth grade. And then when we got to high school, we just stopped speaking. And I think there was this strange, and I'd always wondered about it. And then in, th in writing about it, I realized, I think we both recognized that we were gay and that we couldn't be too close to each other. Because like if we were together, that somehow would draw more attention to They'd the know. issue. Yes. Yeah. Um, which makes me sad. That was one of like the sadder, like when I realized that I was like, oh, I think we both consciously, consciously made this decision to kind of pull away from each other out of some sort of weird fear of being caught or something. So that was an unexpected twist um, when putting together this this book. But going back to the the guy, no, I, I really didn't feel like I was, uh, I felt like I was capable of making those decisions, but I certainly didn't know how to get out of this relationship. And it, um, I didn't realize how much that affected me well into my 20s. Um, because I just, I moved here and I was like, well, that's in the past, let's move forward. Uh, and I never really dealt with what that did. Those things fuck with your trust issues, they mm -hmm. mess with how you relate to other people, how you get into relationships, commit to them. Yeah, those really early formative relationships when they are with someone like that can really break apart those periods of time where you should be having like healthy exploratory relationships yeah. in your 20s. And that takes a little longer, I think, for, it certainly did for me, um, to have that. I mean, I had my first real serious relationship when I was 22, mm -hmm. um, which is a little, not late, but you know, it's later, I suppose, to have like your first serious boyfriend. Um, yeah, I describe it as having um, high self-worth but low self-esteem. Um, I feel like I deserve a lot, but I don't really deserve it. <laughs>